So hello and welcome uh, to that quick video where I wanted to show you how to uh, leverage infrastructure's code with uh, GitLab and give you a very concrete example um, project, uh, how to deploy a Google Kubernetes engine cluster um, as an autopilot cluster. So I wanted to dive into a few things. So just to let you know, if you're just interested into the demo and the repository, feel free to look in the time code below. I'm going to put a time code in and it puts you right to the demo. Um, so you don't have to worry about the slides. So otherwise we're having a quick recap why infrastructure is code, why is that important? Then I want to touch base on why did we deprecate the Terraform template and move to open tofu and what possibilities that opens for us. And then um, we're switching to the demo, infrastructure as code, and deploying that Google Kubernetes autopilot cluster, leveraging infrastructure as code workflow and our um, uh, CI component. Um, and I'm quickly going to touch base on the GitLab managed Terraform state. So first things first, so why infrastructure as code and what are the benefits? So first of all, you have the benefit of a self-documented environment. So that means every change you're doing is basically applied to the infrastructure via your CI. So that means you have the benefit of having really a good collaboration and shared knowledge about your teams, right? You can easily duplicate your environment. If you have a development environment, you want to duplicate it, you can basically just take the code and uh, duplicate it, right? So then you have everything version control. So in case something goes wrong, you can easily roll back, right? So that ultimately leads to a, um, yeah, to a lower mean time to recover. And you can even avoid misconfigured infrastructure because you have a proper code review process in place, hopefully. If not, you should definitely set that up like you have it for your normal software development as well. Then faster time to value. So you'll be able to deploy faster and more often and just like resolve the configuration drift. So you don't have to do kind of like start over again, but you just will kind of like resolve the configuration drift, which results in productivity gains. And then um, lastly, yeah, of course, like permissions are very well regulated with that approach. Um, it's very easy to audit um, those things and um, yeah, parts of the change process and compliance. So quickly, um, Terraform deprecated the um, Terraform templates which we're having. So we deprecated them some time ago, not exactly know when, and I think they are removed into like 18, right? Um, doesn't mean you cannot take them, you cannot maintain them on your own. Absolutely, you can do that. Um, uh, so HashiCorp uh, changed uh, to the BSL license which uh, made that, um, yeah, we um, changed our approach as well. And therefore, we went down the route with uh, Open Tofu and build a CI component, which works great and it's easy to um, yeah, migrate your existing stuff. And we will maintain that component. So I think that's uh, important uh, information uh, which we can give here. Um, so why it is quite easy to kind of migrate if you have your Terraform templates, because um, Open Tofu is meant to be a drop-in replacement. I mean, it, it was forked from uh, basically uh, the last version of Terraform before they changed um, to Bizel. Um Yeah, uh, and that's basically it from, from a slides perspective. So let's have a look at my repository and uh, what I put in here. Um, I'm putting in the link for you as well in the description so you can easily fork that project, download it, whatever. So you'll see that it's very easy to get started with Terraform. So what you need is essentially, it's just like a stack. So that's already a stack. So that is defining my resource. So that is my gke.terraform cluster. So this is basically what I want to have. I want to have a Google container cluster here. Um, I have some settings. I want to have autopilot enabled. I don't want to have deletion protection and I'm setting the release channel to rapid in my case. Yeah. You see as well um, that we have some variables as input here into the Terraform uh, language, uh, which is the cluster name and uh, the GCP region. So basically what you're seeing then is, um, let's start over with the variables. So because we've seen that, let's switch to variables. So you can see here, for example, um, that you can define variables here into my variables file, uh, which I'm using for GCP region. And I'm basically setting um, a default here and uh, just an example for an input, how you can 
input that is if you go to um, the um, CI variables and the GCP project, for example, is a variable I set on the CI level, which you can input and then um, use um, and customize to your needs. Yeah. So what else do we want? So we've set the, the provider um, to Google. Um, and if we look at backend, that's interesting as well. So we said like, okay, leverage um, uh, backend, the HTTP backend. And that's a great thing because we can save our Terraform state. So the state of our resources within GitLab, right? And that's a major advantage as well, because otherwise you have engineers having probably different Terraform states. And um, if you do the deployment of a resource then, on a local laptop, for example, you don't have the current state of things which are deployed. While if you have it version control and if you Terraform state, all that resides in GitLab here, right? And that's uh, the great thing. So how to get started, right? Um, so um, I try to make that as easy and comprehensive as possible here. Um, if you find a mistake, please submit an MR um, like Timo did already. Um, thank you for that. Um, and you see that basically, so um, you can customize the resources here, but I just want to really give an easy example how to deploy a Kubernetes cluster uh, in that case. So what we're using is the open tofu CI component here. And to get started, it's very simple. So basically you log onto your Google Cloud Console. Um, I put in all the links here. You navigate to service accounts and you create a new service account for our uh, purpose here and you download that as a JSON key format, okay? So download that, keep it secure. So there are credentials in it, okay? So keep it secure. And then you need to assign some roles. So I plan to do a few more things. So that's why I have uh, probably a few more roles which you wanna do, but you need to go to the identity and access management and assign those roles to your service account in order to work, okay? So the next thing what we're going to do is we need to set up um, the variable. So our CICD variable. So you go to settings, or you go to CICD and uh, variables, and then you can set them up. And what you're doing is basically you set up the uh, Terraform variable for the GCP project, um, which is in my case, that one. Okay. So ensure in your Google Cloud console, you'll see that. What is your um, project ID? And then put in the credentials which we had and put them in as base 64 Google credentials as the key and you need to base 64 encode them before you um, put them here in as value so that means just if you have a Mac or a Linux you just do base 64 input and put in your JSON file okay that's encoded that's not encrypted so just like make sure you are going to mask that in your CI okay so that's very important um, to have that done okay yeah, so like I said, so if you need to specify anything else, you can do that in the variables. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you're you're basically good to go and you uh, are able to run your pipeline and you will have a, a Google Kubernetes cluster deployed. Okay, so like I said, the great thing is kind of like it does drift detection, so it only changes what we want. And that results, if I'm going to the pipeline here, you see that kind of like the last pipeline. I've just run that a bunch of times and you see that there was basically nothing changed because yeah, I did not change anything into the configuration. So the current state was detected and nothing was actually um, changed here in terms of my infrastructure. So where does the Terraform state now reside? So you can go here to um, operate in Terraform states and then you see um, the my default Terraform state, which I'm using. So you see that this was last update 29 minutes. So the state wasn't updated from the last pipeline because there was no no change basically in here. So I hope you um, enjoyed that little uh, demonstration. I hope it helps you to kind of like kickstart your infrastructure as code journey. Um, and I'm looking forward to your feedback. And the next thing would be to enhance that and basically automate um, the installation of um, certain tools you need. So probably an ingress controller and some charts to connect the cluster to GitLab. And um, I'm planning to use um, the approach which uh, we're using here at GitLab, um, leveraging Flux, okay? Um, to look, have a look at the CI, just like last but not least, you'll see that I'm setting some tags here because uh, I want to have that quite fast. So I'm using the SaaS runners and you see that um, I'm injecting uh, the credentials here uh, by this command before kind of like, um, just like including the component. Yeah, 
um, with uh, the stages which I want to run here. And I don't want to run the FMT stage um, into my project. So that's why I'm overriding this here. Okay, thank you very much.